Thank you. Wonderful, Brother Ray. Wonderful. Praise God. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I know what it is to feel like you can't do, and then you do. Hallelujah. It's when the anointing hits, glory to God. Beautiful. Thank you, Brother Ray. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, give him another hand. Thank you. I think I also, uh, it's not on my notes, but I think I remember Brother Herman telling me that Sarah Ferguson possibly will be coming home this week. And that is a miracle upon miracles. She'll be able to get some of the uh, continued uh, work that she needs done here locally instead of having to be in Atlanta. And I mean, Sarah's been up there, I don't know how long, maybe six weeks. It's been a good while. But can you imagine the joy she must feel and, and being able, and we will just agree that she will be able to to come this week, uh, Sister Sarah Ferguson, Reverend Sarah Ferguson, what a wonderful miracle woman that is. So we continue to lock our faith there and believe and stand and stand with her. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I say to you again how wonderful you look today. It's just, it's marvelous. I'm so thankful that God lets us continue to gather together. Uh, you know, last week, some of the things that, that, uh, that I shared pertaining in, in, in last week's message, they bothered me, maybe they didn't bother you, but they bothered me about living in uncertainty and, and all that's happened and all that's going on. And, and particularly, uh, I thought, Lord, if ever there's been any uncertainty, dear God, uh, do y'all, have y'all just feel just this uncertainty everywhere you, don't, everywhere you turn, everywhere you go, not know exactly? The only rock that we can hold on to is Jesus Christ. And, and of course, I mean, he's all we need. Don't misunderstand me. But at the same time, but one of the things that bothered me so much was this particular little quote that I gave that a very recent poll indicates that not only are many people who used to go to church regularly, are, they are not planning to come back at all. This is a national, uh, and it's a, a, a survey that you can really take it to the bank, so to speak, as long as we can go to the bank, hallelujah, and said that even among those who've been watching online, this is the part that I, I don't understand, even those who have been watching online, one third are no longer even watching. They've drifted completely away and basically have no intent of coming back. Now, that, you take those two figures together, that is an enormous amount of people who have called themselves. These, these are church-going people. Now, we're not talking about people who said they might go to church someday. We're talking about people who were going to church, who are no longer no longer, for whatever reason, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not coming back. Uh, I mean, they, they, make, they don't plan at all. We're talking about who used to go to church regularly. They were, they were here all the time. They're not coming back. They have no plans to come back. And, and then you take a third, you know, a third, a third, yeah. third watching out of the group that wasn't here. Come on. They, they've quit watching. Uh, and people wonder if we are in the end days. Uh. You know, we could, we could go and read Timothy, and my goodness gracious, you see that we, it, it, it just slaps you in the face. <clears throat> we are living in those days where people are turning away and where, uh, as I made a comment last week, when Hebrew made the comment, don't drift away, be careful that you drift away, be careful. Yeah. It is so easy. And, and yeah. it is so easy. It's, it's easier than you think it is. Yeah. I mean, you have to make a concerted effort. Yeah. But let me say that before. I'm not in the message yet, but let me just say this to you. If you don't realize the slyness of the devil, 
and understand that you have an enemy that will do anything to make you not grow and to make you in the grow in the things of the Lord. If he can't keep you from going to heaven, he wants you just to get on the back row seat with binoculars. I mean, he wants you to just slide in with your behind burned. That's my interpretation of Corinthians, okay? Uh, it says something very similar to that in, in, in Corinthians. Uh, but it, it's just amazing to me that the church is not even aware of it, not even tuned into it. But you know, the thing is, uh, our walk with God is a relationship. Right. Yes. It's, it's a relationship with Him. Now let's take that and it'll help you understand why relationships and marriages are falling apart. Amen. Because everything, if a marriages are falling apart, then relationships with the Lord's going to fall apart. Amen. I mean, all of it goes together. Yes. Because everything in a relationship is costly. Amen. You don't just all of a sudden... You know, you have to, it, it's a give and take. It's, it's a wanting a relationship. Right. It's, it's a going after, it's a pursuing, it's staying in, it's, it, it, it's pressing in, it's a forgiving, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a loving and, and, and it's just not, it's not all about you. Amen. It's about sharing and doing and, and paying the price and that you matter enough that I'll do this and I'll give here and I'll give there. Jesus is the same way. Amen. Coming to church is the same way. Sure yes. Easy to stay home. Sure Easy to do your own thing. But my goodness, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, particularly as the coming of the Lord nears. Yes. And if ever we were in a place where the Lord is on his way back, this is where we are. Now, the message today uh, I say it every week because it, it always matters so much to me how the Lord seems to, well, he, he'll say this about this and then the next week he says this about this. And, and, and I see so how he's building. And, and I, I made the comment when I was talking with him yesterday. I said, you know, I, Lord, I just can't even imagine what these next messages, if what I personally, and I'm, this is me, what I personally think about the return of the Lord. I personally feel that the Lord is coming back extremely quick. Uh, I, I mean, I would not be surprised, you know, if, uh, if we don't even see February. I, I wouldn't be surprised we didn't see the, 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 the middle of, of January. That's how close I think it is. We may not even be here for Christmas, who knows? That's how close we really are as you begin to look around. Most people won't say things like that because they don't want anybody throwing eggs at them. And, you know, they don't want to be wrong. I've been wrong many times. But I tell you one thing that it's done, it's made me really look at some things. It's made me tweak some things. It's made me look at my life and, and, and uh, uh, see what's of value to me. And when I was saying that, I said, Lord, I, I, I bet these next messages are not going to be, oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. <laughs> I, I, I just had this, this I, for the last, I don't know, week or so, I have absolutely had this burden almost about this season. And I'm going to make a statement that I hope you will understand. And I started not to say it, and I thought, well, I think it, why not say it? I feel this way. I feel very strongly. Talk to the Lord about it. It's what I actually feel what I believe. I believe if we aren't careful that, that Christmas will be a great distraction. Well, a great distraction during this season. Well, uh, because Christmas is not the way to the Lord the way you and I see it and interpret it. We've lost the meaning of it. And, and uh, Christmas the season, if you aren't careful as you look around, the world is not celebrating Jesus. Right. It is not about Jesus. It's not about, it's, it's beautifully decorated. I want to thank those who've done it. As beautifully decorated as the Sanctuary is there. And it is, y'all give them a hand. They've done a fabulous job. As beautifully decorated as, as they, those who, it wasn't very many of them, they worked hard. Thank y'all so much. But those who worked to make the place beautiful for us and all, as beautiful as it is, this, where we are, 
in the season and time on God's timetable, it is not about, it is, it, it's just, we cannot let Christmas become a distraction of trying to bring people into the kingdom and taking advantage of these end days. Now, I, I, I don't know. We'll see what the Lord does with the messages. But I, I'm, I'll assure you, just from the one I'm giving today, at the 1st of December. Do you realize that there are only four Sundays left in this year, including today? Right. Including today. And I'm very interested in what the Lord is saying. And the Lord told us about 2020. And if you keep, go back and keep reading, there's great insight to 2020 message. Great insight about things happening in the world and things that are going on. And that's the reason I'm saying if we aren't careful we're going to get sidetracked by something we have done forever that we have made a family gathering that we have made not about Jesus. We have turned it into a family happening. We have turned it into a gift giving something. We've turned it into a holiday for us to enjoy. And it is not based on the graciousness and the goodness and the mercy and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know that and I know that. If ever there was a time we need to come back home Amen. to the reason it is now. So, okay, I said it. Hallelujah. I hope you'll keep watching. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I'm going to talk about something that I have trouble with. I don't know anybody who doesn't have trouble with it. And I wanted to say, oh, no, Lord, not this. <laughs> have you ever noticed that the Lord just gets in your business? Yeah. I mean, he just gets in your business. But again, as you pay attention to the messages, times of uncertainty, times of uncertainty. And I thought, you know, the Lord must be reading the newspapers. He must know what's going on. He must not know what's happening around us. And don't think that everything is over. And let me, let me say to you, these next uh, word, a prophetic word came forth talking about 33 days from November the 8th, which takes us to December the 11th. A word came forth that something would happen. Do you remember that? That something would happen? Well, that's next Friday. Within this time frame, something the Lord said would take place and watch and see what he would do. Now, that's if you pay attention to the prophetic word. Amen. Many of you had not even thought about it again. So I'm warning you. I'm telling you. Things are happening. Things are not the way they appear. They're not the way they appear. It, nothing, nothing is smooth. We're living in very uncertain times. And righteousness and the Bible, this is the time for the righteousness in the Bible. Do not back up. Amen. Hold your ground for righteousness and the Bible. So let me say that, hallelujah. Say, well, Pastor, you're just making people not come to church. No, I'm not making people not come to church. People aren't going to come to church anyway. I'm just giving them an excuse. <laughs> hallelujah. Because most people don't want to stand. They don't want to stand for righteousness. So today, today, oh my goodness. We well, want to talk to you about the marvels of patience. Now, you know you don't, don't ever ask the Lord to teach you patience. You, you don't want to do that. Okay, I'll just tell you that right up front. But there is a word that most of us do not like to hear. But it is something that all of us need. And in particularly in this season. What season am I talking about? I'm talking about the season of the return of the Lord. Now, that's the heartbeat of the season I'm talking about. I'm not talking about Christmas season. Amen. I'm talking about there is a season of the return of the Lord that we are in the very midst of. We did a message talking about times and what times meant. You might want to go back and look at it again, understanding all the different, what kind of times they were and where we were on God's timetable. You might want, want to go back and look at it. So, you know, it's easy to be patient if you're, you're at somewhere and, you know, you're sitting around for a root canal. I could wait forever for that to go by. How about you? Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, you know, when it comes to anything else, it, it kind of tries our patience. I mean, we are very short-fused people. 
to, to want God to be so patient with us. Now, we're just not good at it. And, 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 and men are really bad at it. And women are not so hot. So the whole crowd of us need help. Now, the Lord is saying to us, and I just put you in a little capsule. The Lord is saying to us, now is that you're going to need patience, and, and I'm going to explain it to you. You're going to need patience in the season of my return because there's a suddenly, a gradually is becoming a suddenly. And so you've got to be patient in interpreting and looking at what we're supposed to be looking at here. So the Word of God is very clear about the value of patience. Patience, patience is a virtue. Somebody said, well, great, what's a virtue? A virtue, I thought, well, everybody may not know. It's a behavior showing high moral standards, moral excellence, you know. It's listed among the fruit of the Spirit, patience. patience. I mean, we read it, we can quote them all, patience. And in the book of Hebrew, we've taught it many times when it comes to healing. How many times have we referred to Hebrews 6, 12, where it says, through faith and patience, what happens? You inherit the promises of God. It's, it, that one scripture right there answers a whole bunch of things for a lot of people who are having difficulty. Through faith and patience, you'll inherit the promises of God. And the wisest man of the Old Testament, Sol Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 7, the end of a matter is better than its beginning. Patience of spirit is better than haughtiness of spirit. Oh my goodness. The Bible can nail you down, can it? He also said in Proverbs 16.32, Proverbs 16.32, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city. Now, I'm going to tell you right up front, we're going to ring your doorbell today. I mean, he has ding-donged on mine all week, and I can't wait to spread the news. <laughs> because I know he really means for us to pay attention to this. So, so what is patience? The Word of God identifies patience as a virtue. I've already said that. It's a character that, that pleases the Lord. And I said, Lord, I, I really do want to please you, but I, I don't know that I want to be so bold as to say, Lord, teach me patience. I just couldn't get it out. I just couldn't get it out. Because I know when he teaches you patience, how basically he's going to teach me patience. And I'm not going to like the method. Anybody understand that? So I said, Lord, you know that. I just won't, we won't go there if you don't mind. Now, patience is a collection of virtues, for patience demands a certain level of self-control. That's right. Yeah. 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 Lest you explode on everybody. Amen. Now, don't sit there and act like you have it just erupted on top of people, like you have not just vomited all over somebody, your, your, your feelings and, and your emotions and where, wherever you were when they hit you and they mashed your button and boom, you went. That, my friend, is lack of self-control. That's what the Lord is calling, you don't have any patience. And then it says also, it requires humility. A recognition that the world does not evolve around you. I, I mean, <laughs> and that having to wait is just a normal part of life. Well, I don't have time. I just don't have time. See, we live in a world now that has made us not so, not such wonderful people. I just don't know another way to say it. I mean, everything, we drive through, we get this, we want that. If you have to wait five minutes, I mean, I'm getting out of line, getting out of this, forget about this, go somewhere else, just close it, and just throw it back to the, you made me wait too long, blah, 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 blah. I mean, we have become little baby monsters. <laughs> I'm talking to the church today. And don't act like the church doesn't do this. You know, I, I, I've gone in restaurants, so many restaurants, and, and, and had the waitresses and all tell me, you know, uh, uh, when they would know who I was or something like that. And thank God they usually said nice things. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but, but I've had them end up erupting on me about the church that has just left. The church, they, well, we don't like, we don't like Sundays. Right. 
We don't like the church to come in. They're very demanding. They don't believe in tipping at all. Well, I thought, obviously, they don't believe in giving offerings either. I could about name who they were if they were from my church. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a characteristic that goes on. If you are a giver, you're a giver. That's right. Hallelujah. And then it says that patience requires a measure of kindness and mercy yeah. toward people. <laughs> I need to throw that in because some of you think you're kind and uh, merciful, but the problem is when you bring somebody else in your life, you explode. Well. See, people are our problem. And yet, it's people that we're supposed to be winning to the kingdom of God. Amen. Without patience, you're not going to win them. Amen. That's right. Amen. Do you know that people are paying attention to you? Amen. Everywhere you go, whatever you do, I've said it for years. I, for years. For years I've said, you know, be it, be it uh, friends, neighbors, staff, wh whoever it might be. People, don't let them be saying they don't want to work with you. Don't want them to say they don't want to be around you. Don't let them say, you know, that you're a stick in the mud, that you're hard to deal with. Do you know when you tell people, when they said that you're hard to deal with, and when you, when you tell them that, that people think that about them, that those are always, nine-tenths of the time when you use those words, nine-tenths of the time, those are the people who just shake their head and don't believe a word you said. They're so self-deceived. Well, thank you for that hallelujah. All right. So it's people that just make us, I mean, they're the instigators of our impatience. It's people. Now, you probably, how many of you, don't even, don't even lift your hand. How many of you stood in front of your microwave and just thought you wanted to knock it out the door because it didn't, wasn't fast enough? <laughs> Did you realize how, how stupid that is? Or in the office, you need to replace the microwave. I mean, it takes forever to get anything done. As if they're telling me, you know, I want to be such a good employee, I would actually, you know, half of my time is standing in front of that old timey microwave you got back there. That is a joke. Do I look that stupid? You better watch that well, brother. I heard you. <laughs> But I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, look what's happened to us. If I can't have my way, if I can't do it my way, if I can't go when I want to go, do what I want to do, do it my way, move when I want to move, da-da-da-da-da, park in my parking place, sit in my seat, do what I want to do, I'm out of here. Come on. And you can call it anything you want to. It's impatience. And oh, when I tell you what the Lord said about it, oh, Jesus, help me. James, the brother of the Lord, addressed this issue. Let's let him talk about it. James 5, 7 through 11. Therefore, be patient, brethren and sistren, until the coming of... It's interesting to me that he starts this whole thing off because I'm always talking to the Lord about when are you coming? When are you coming? I've even told him he's missed some opportunities. <laughs> Has anybody else ever said that to him? I said, well, you really missed a good opportunity here. This is really a good time. I mean, you know, you could have, this is a time you could have really shown up. This would have been very significant had you come right now. <laughs> it, it, he, was, he was saying lack of patience. Lack of patience. And the whole bottom line was, I wasn't thinking about anybody coming into the kingdom. I was just thinking, get me out of here. Come on I mean, let's be real. Yeah. And see, his heart is, let me get as many people in as I possibly can get in here. And your attitude and the way you see about it, you're not going to bring anybody in. You're scared them all off. Come on. <laughs> you know, the Lord, when he beats you with a wet noodle, I mean, he whips you know? I mean, he, he wants our heart and his to be the same. But I have. I have said to the Lord, I'm not teasing. I've really said you really missed some opportunities. I mean, you know, this was a really grand one. You could have come, you know? And, of course, I didn't get any feedback. I mean, but 
<laughs> so, so I'm talking to him all the time about being patient. Therefore, be patient. So look at the first thing he addresses. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and latter rains. You too be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. Do not complain, brother and sister, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. Now that's saying the judge is standing. He's coming. He's at the door. And I'm saying, come on in. Because I, I'm only saying come on in at the moment that I think I'm okay for him to come in. Oh, I mean, come on, let's talk church. I mean, there's sometimes that I'm thinking, Phew, glad he didn't come today. <laughs> Anybody been there? Yeah. yeah, I'm thinking, you know, sometimes I'm thinking, man, I'm ready. I just came out of church, been praising God, hallelujah. I just about got raptured during church, hallelujah. Let's just go on up while we're all here. Right. And then you get out and act like a complete idiot, and you say, oh, thank God he didn't come today. Then we've got time. <laughs> we are wishy-washy. We are schizoid. You do know that, don't you? Oh, those of them who know it, Lord bless them. Thank you. But it goes on. And, and the whole scripture goes, he says, As an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We count those blessed who endured. You've heard of the endurance of Job. Yes, I really have, Lord. You've heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. Now, the Greek word for patient means long-fused. <laughs> Someone who does it erupt quickly, no matter what happens. Everybody faces times and situations that require patience. We all know that. And in those times, God is trying to help us spiritually develop. Now, I'm not tuned into that a whole bunch. How about you? But, but he's watching to, to bring us up to, to a different level. And he's looking for fruit, for the fruit to grow. Uh, for the fruit of the Spirit to be shown, shown in your life. You know, if we've been walking with the Lord 20 years, and your fruit's not any bigger than my toenail, I mean, something has happened to us, you know? I mean, if you, if you have no fruit and all you have is a bud still, after 20 years, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I mean, we want everybody else to have the fruit. But I mean... You know, nobody likes the times when we're supposed to be learning, and everybody needs them. I'm, here, I'm sure you've heard those saying, when the, <laughs> when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Jesus said, that's not what I think. He said, when the going gets tough, the tough, sh the tough should drop to their knees. Amen. Amen. I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, you could have gone all day long. And I said that. You know, Verse 7, James says, Be patient unto the coming of the Lord. Now, this does speak directly to the anticipation of the Lord. Is anybody in here anticipating? I am anticipating. I, I've already told you. I am expecting the Lord to come very quickly. He said I would help usher in the return of the Lord. I'm expecting the Lord to come. Come on, give me your hand. How many of you really are expecting? I mean, I'm looking for him. Amen. I'm expecting him to come. But it may mean something else to us. For instance, for some of you today, it could be be patient until you see the answer to your prayers. Somebody else, it could be, be patient while you're waiting for your healing to be manifested. Somebody else, it could be, be patient as the Lord delivers you from a circumstance. Which, in all three of those, the Lord's working already. Right. We're not begging him to do anything. He's doing it. Right. He's already working. He's doing it. Joyful, confident waiting is what we're talking about. <laughs> 
waiting and joyfully just to mean my book don't go together. How, how about you? Y'all are so holy. I am really with the right crowd today. <laughs> Joyful, confident waiting I'm talking about is the kind of waiting that patient will enable you to have. The Lord expects us to be joyful in our waiting. You know, we, we said, oh, I'm joyful and waiting on the Lord. And we can't even be joyful, honey, waiting in line to get to the microwave. Come on. I mean, we, we can't. I mean, trying to get a parking place, trying to turn in to go to church. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Stop and think. How long did the Lord wait for you to come to Him? For you to really surrender. I'm telling you, He waited a long time for me. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about you. But I knew Him a long time before I really surrendered. I mean, I knew Him a long time. Thank God for patience. Thanks, God. He waited patiently. Yeah. Jesus said to the farmers, wait patiently for the rains necessary, you know, to produce a good crop. Then he says, you too be patient. Strengthen your hearts. A weak heart doesn't do so hot, you know, to me when trouble shows up. So what does it mean to strengthen your heart? Psalms 119, 11. Your word I have hid in my heart, it says in King James. But here, your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, that's, that's a very, my, this has to do with patience. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Patience. I know you, Lord. I, I know who you are. I mean, I can control myself a minute. But see, we live in a society that does not believe in controlling yourself at all. And it is, it is not helping us. It's not helping us. See, when, when rough times hit, what we need most is to immerse ourselves in the Word of God. And you and I both know when rough times come, it's hard to get in the Word. I mean, when rough times come, it's hard to pray. It's hard to do anything except moan and groan. And who in the world wants to go to church when things are tough? And that's where we should be more than any other place. Amen. We need to be reading the Word out loud, decreeing and declaring the Word and, and saying what the Word says and speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And yet when things get really bad, I mean when the family falls apart, when this happens, when we don't have enough money to meet the ends and da-da-da-da-da-da-da and all these things that happen and people are ugly and nasty and everything else. I mean who in the world wants to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs? You just want to just spew on them. You know you do. I'm just trying to show all of this has to do with waiting on the Lord. Amen. All it has to do is waiting on the Lord. Look at Matthew 12, 37. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Oh, Lord, by your words you'll be justified, by your words you'll be condemned. You know, what we say in these difficult times is very important at the moment. What we say. Watch your words. Speak the word over yourself, over your family, over this nation, over the church. That's the reason I asked and I brought up the prophecy a while ago. Because the, pro the word of prophecy given on November the 8th here in this sanctuary, given, it says, 33 days, in 33 days, we will be amazed at what God is and will do in 33 days, which brings us to November the, I mean, December the 11th. Well, I don't know about you, but I, I hadn't, I've been expecting amazing things. Amen. I've been watching amazing things since this prophecy was given. Amen. He said we would see amazing things the whole time. He didn't just say it would happen on December the 11th. I've been seeing amazing things. 
But in essence, he said, I hadn't seen anything yet. Right. His exact words were, you're going to be amazed at what God is doing and will do. And in the meantime, praise him and worship him. Yes. Now, see, that was set on November the 8th. December the 11th is before we meet next week. When we, when we are gathered here next week, that event of this week will have happened. Something that's going to help us stay praising and worshiping and having patience. God didn't just give these messages for nothing. For nothing. For nothing. So whether it's COVID-19 or the election chaos or any personal trial or difficulty that's going on. If we let ourselves get overwhelmed, has anybody been overwhelmed in all of this? The rest of you liars, God forgive every one of them. <laughs> Most of us, I've been overwhelmed about a lot of things. I've been overwhelmed. He if, if says, if you let yourself, let yourself. Say, let yourself. Let yourself. If you let yourselves get overwhelmed, discouraged, or depressed and depressed, let yourself get depressed. The last thing we want to do is what we need to do the most. Get in the Word and start praising God. That's right. Why did Paul say this is a fight of faith? Because you have to fight through all of this. All of this discouragement and this being overwhelmed and being depressed. Those three, those three things, overwhelmed, discouraged, depressed, they try to follow you. Have you noticed? They like, it doesn't take much for them to try to camp out at your house. They ride in the car with you. I mean, they just, they just kind of, they're just there. And if you aren't careful with your mouth, you can draw them on in. That's right. That's right. You, can, you can get booty butter pals with them. I mean, you can just get really draw them to yourself real fast with your mouth. I mean, your mouth is like glue. Come on in. Come on in. Then he said, fight through your natural emotions and feelings. In hard times, now he keeps talking about hard times. In hard times, your mouth can make a difference for what's happening. Amen. Now, those who are young in the faith, you know, they may need some strong support. But if you've been walking with the Lord a long time, like a lot of you have, Jesus is expecting us to do three things. Praise him. Worship him and walk joyfully. Amen. Amen. In the middle of all of it. Now, you know, this pandemic has messed us up. I mean, it has. It's messed up everything. I mean, don't need to act like it hadn't. It's messed all of us up. And the media keeps messing it up more than anything else is messing up. And we talked about that last Sunday morning. We gave statistics and things pertaining to, to that. I mean, you know, every day, this many people have died. This many things have happened. This many things. I, I, they never do a comparison. Right. I mean, what happened to the flu? Right. I mean, at one point, by the multiple thousands, people were dying of the flu. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's vanished. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's just all kinds of things. The media... Lies Amen. to bring control Amen. and to frighten. And you know the ones that want to frighten the most, and they probably don't even know it. They probably don't even know it because the, the demonic forces keep you out of church. Right. Pull the church down. Don't let them come. Don't let them sing. Don't let them praise God. Don't let them come. To, don't let them come together and get united to get. Don't do that. They can all drink together and sing. They can march together and sing. Lock arms together and sing. They can all go together and do whatever they all want to do. But dear God, don't let them go in the church. 
How crazy is that? Well, I can't come to church. I mean, in church. I can't come to church. I mean, everybody's not wearing a mask. You want to wear a mask? Wear a mask. Nobody's stopping you from wearing a mask. I assume, I assume everybody who's afraid to come to church, they must be just dying on the highway starving to death. Surely they're not going out to Publix and Kroger and places like that and buying food. I mean, I mean, people on top of each other in those places. Surely not. I mean, so they must not be doing that. I mean, they can't be go where there's gathering. I mean, they can't walk. They can't. So they must be just falling off like flies somewhere. And the people, we don't see them because they bear them everywhere. Huge auditorium. You can sit so far away we have to wave at you to even see you in here. And yet, though, oh, we can't come. I mean, wh wh why don't you drive by Walmart's? Why don't you? I mean, you can't get it if you keep car windows rolled up. Drive by Walmart's. Why don't you go by Kroger? Why don't you go by Kroger? Because I know y'all haven't been shopping or anything. Why don't you do that? Go by Target. Go by all of Go in the pet store. <laughs> I mean, go anywhere, the toy store, anywhere. You can't even find a parking place to get, I mean, you, what is it? But don't come to church. Don't come to church. Oh, Jesus. Don't come to church and don't sing. Don't say, oh, but, oh, yell, you can yell, you can yell, you can clap, you can scream, you can go to rallies, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, and you can do that. And, you, you know, you can get up there and you can, you can, you know, you can do anything you want to, march up and down the street, do this, do this thing, scream and yell and spit on each other, do anything you want to do. But don't get in church because my spit may go all over you. What is wrong with us? <laughs> Control. We don't see the demonic forces. Have patience for the coming of the Lord. But he didn't say be stupid. <laughs> All of you who are watching out there, don't write me. You don't want to lick a stamp or do anything like that. Or don't send me any. <laughs> don't send me an email. The machine will blow up. It does. I'm telling the truth. Amen. Why the world is afraid of the church? Yes. Demonic forces. It's not the world. It's the demonic forces behind it that's driving everybody, and the church cannot see it. That's why I say Christmas can be a distraction, but it will not be a distraction for the remnant. Amen. Not this Christmas. Amen. We're too close to his return. He's coming. Amen. Don't waste what little time we have running in and out and buying gifts and doing everything. Dear God, I mean, somebody may spit on you. If you're not coming to church, don't dare go into the world. I don't care what it is you need. Hallelujah. Let them drive by and throw it at your door. Whatever. Surely, listen to me, surely, if Walmart and Publix and Kroger and all them places and and all the shopping centers, you would not know one single thing was wrong. If they're functioning and get this, they are prospering. Have you been looking? They are prospering. And churches are closing down. 
because people can't come to church. And if you don't come, we're surely not going to send money when we're not there to even get a glory, glory song sung to us. So we'll let the church close the doors, never to be open again. See. Happening all over the nation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All over the nation. C -c help me. If these places are functioning and prospering yeah. in a pandemic, yeah. don't act like y'all hadn't been out. I want to ask a question. Surely the church of Jesus Christ should be out shining all of them. Amen. Should not the church be prospering more than any? We're looking for the return of the Lord. Shouldn't the church where the powerhouse of God resides, where the control of a nation hovers, in the church where our voice and our, and, our, and our prayers and our standing on the Word of God can direct an election, can direct where what's happening, can take place of what's going on, can, can, can move everything. All of heaven is moved by the church behind them. I mean, as the church stands. My Word, we should be building What is wrong with this picture? You're here, and I thank God you're here. Thank you for being here. The Lord said to me, the Internet needs to hear this. Listen up. I'm trying to tell you the truth. Godly patience, and listen, godly patience will endure wearing a mask. Throw the mask on, dear God. You know, what's it hurting? You don't even have to put makeup on. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can do with social distances. Some people don't want to be too close to anyway. Come on, hello. <laughs> We, we can trust God to make us stable in the midst of this. We can believe God to help us in the middle of all of it. We don't have to carry on. I'm not going to wear a mask. I'm not going to do it. Well, if you don't want to, don't. But dear God, don't carry on about it. Right. Right. You know, sometimes it's better. It's better just to protect somebody to show that you're not rebellious. What's it hurting? As long as you stay strong in the gospel, Amen. stay strong in the church, Amen. and stay strong in your faith in Jesus Christ, your faith is not in the mask. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not saying not to do them. I'm saying to do them. I'm saying do them. We don't know how much longer this stupid virus is going to go on. We don't know. But we do know this. The Lord is wanting to build our faith and our patience yes. and our endurance of the present situation. He's using everything to help us. You moan and groan all day long, but it didn't make it any better, did it? Well. He wants us to use this time to grow in grace and patience and allow the Lord to grow the fruit of the Spirit. James puts it this way. James uh, James 1, it's actually verses 2 and 3. I probably didn't give it all correctly. Consider it all joy, dear brethren, when you encounter uh, various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let patience, it goes on to say, let patience or endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Politicians say, don't let a crisis go to waste. The Lord's saying, don't let this present season go to waste. Let God grow patience in us to increase our fruitfulness. For he's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. So what is patience? The ability to wait with confidence and joy 
knowing whom you trust, and that he is never late, he's never early, he's right on time. Amen. Have you ever noticed, I had never noticed this, have you ever noticed that in Paul's description of, of the true biblical love in 1 Corinthians, the very first thing is love is patient? I mean, we read it, but I mean, who cared? We just read it and just kept on going. Just kept on going. There is no true love, my friends, toward one another if we are unwilling to be patient with one another. Thank you for that. Let me give you some reasons and we'll start closing here. Why do we get impatient? It's, it's our natural default position. <laughs> Number one, things don't happen according to your personal timetable. I mean, who said they had to? You did. Number two, our expectations are not met. In other words, you get frustrated, and your frustration is the feeling of being upset or annoyed because of inability to change or achieve something. You are not in control. Aren't you thankful God didn't get frustrated with you? Yeah. Number three, others don't do what you expect them to do. Well. So and that cause you inconvenience, so you fed up with them. Number four, various interruptions present us from getting something done that we think is important, and you keep interrupting me. Talking about why do we get impatient. Number five, or the driver in front of us is going entirely too slow and there's not room to pass him. So we become a maniac behind the wheel. Right. We could go on and on with examples of why we get impatient, but let me say this one the way. The Lord put it this way, church. Impatience is simply selfishness. Ouch. We're not getting what we want, so we're short-tempered. Impatience is a form of anger that becomes an adult temper tantrum. And it does not move Jesus. Amen. Look at what J James said in chapter 5, verse 9. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. If Jesus is standing at the door, let me ask you, don't you think you don't want to be ugly and act like an idiot and throw a temper tantrum? If you really thought he was standing at the door? Let's think about Elijah for a minute. You remember, Elijah had a pity party. I'm the only prophet you got left. You remember? When, he, when, when uh, uh, Obadiah, I remember, and then, then the Lord said, well, there, Obadiah has a hundred back there in the cave. And then remember when Elijah ran to the cave, he said, I'm still the only one. And, and he said, Jesus said, uh, uh, the Lord said, well, there's 7,000 who haven't bowed their knee. So that's 7,100. And Elijah says, I'm the only one. <laughs> Daniel. Daniel was tried by King Darius, but he didn't keep him out of the line then. He was in the lines then, and, and, and I want, but it strengthened him. Joseph sat in prison for a very long time. Yeah. For something he didn't even do. He didn't even do. I bet he was tempted to be impatient. I mean, when I got out, I'd want to shoot the baker and the... Uh, which one of them? One of them got chopped off anyway. Whatever. Yeah. How about Noah building the ark for 120 years? You know, I'm almost through, but I want to I say this. I was asking the Lord, the thing about Noah has bothered me. Because I've always been so fascinated when he said, as the ark was to Noah, so is the plaza of the whole life ministry. You must get ready for what I'm about to do. So I've always been fascinated with Noah. I've read that story so many times. But the Lord showed me a different little side of it. 
when he talked about as in the days of Noah, you know, uh, uh, Lot, Noah, but Noah, that we live in these end days that the Lord would come. I did a reversal, and, and, and the Lord said, you're absolutely correct. I, I began thinking about it, and, and I thought, well, let me put myself here. Okay, if I'm the only preacher of righteousness, and Noah was the only preacher of righteousness, what the Scripture said, another interesting thing, the Lord did not even tell Noah to make room for anybody else to get in the ark. We don't, we don't even know he's called a preacher of righteousness until we get to Peter. Peter called him a preacher of righteousness. He was just called a righteous man. He was the only righteous man in Genesis. The only righteous man. And in the very, very introduction to Noah, the only righteous man, the Lord tells him who to take in with him, which animals, and what people. Because the Lord said there wasn't anybody else who was righteous. Now, keep that in mind. Then the question becomes, okay, if I'm living and I'm the only person, and there were a couple of million people on the earth at that time, and I'm the only person who is called righteous, and I am building a boat, nobody's seen any rain, I'm building a boat to save me and my four no more, it looks like. You with me? And I'm building it. And put yourself today. You're doing it. Everybody around you is just full of the devil. Everybody around you is evil. Nobody wants to know anything. Nobody, no one righteous. Nobody around you righteous. No one. No one. No one. And 120, no one. Today, what would they be doing? Burning my boat down? Attacking me at night, laughing in my face, trying to beat up on me and everybody else. I'm talking about as it was in the days of Noah. Can you imagine what that man went through? Can you imagine the only righteous one and him trying to say, as they ask questions, this is what I'm doing it for, and this is why I'm doing it. The laughter, the mockery. And if he's living in our day and age, because we already know they're burning down churches, we already know they're tearing down statues, we already, even now, at this point, yes. what if there was one person standing? What do you think hell did to that man? I know this. The armies of heaven protected him. Because God protects the righteous. Is that much I know. That much I know. Hannah waited years to have a child. But the one thing they all did, all these heroes, they witnessed. They talked about God. They talked about who God was. Now we're waiting for the Lord to appear. Waiting for the pandemic to be over. Waiting for the election chaos to end. The top of the list. I'm waiting for the Lord to appear. So right now is the time to talk about the Lord more than ever and to tell others about Jesus like you've never told them in your whole life. Verse 11, chapter 5, verse 11. We count those blessed who endured. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. Job went through it, y'all. Job lost everything. He didn't have the Holy Spirit walking in him. His house, his possessions, his children. His wife told him to curse God. He got to the point of thinking that the only thing left was for him to die. But he didn't because God had Satan on a leash. <laughs> no, you can't go any further than this. And the greatest moment in Job's entire life when he made one statement, though you slay me, yet I will trust you. What am I saying? Things may get worse. You and I must say, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. That has to be where we are. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. James said it in, in James 5, 12. He said, but above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth 
or with any other oath, but your yes is to be yes, your no, no, so that you won't fall under judgment. Let me make it simple. Don't be saying things you shouldn't be saying like, oh, Lord, if you just get me out of this, you can send me to Africa, and I'll just do this, and I'll serve you the rest of my life. Take my bank account. It's okay. I'll sell one of my four cars. I'll do whatever you want me to do, and I'll come to church at least once every month. Don't make rash promises. Just trust God. Learn this principle. The longer it takes to get past a trial or difficulty, if you strengthen your heart in the things of the Lord in the Bible, the greater the harvest will be when your season ends. See, if, 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 if you get out too soon, you're going to be undeveloped, your fruit. Stay too long, you'll be rotten. God knows the exact time to get you out. Caleb waited a long time, you know, for the mountain that God promised him. He was old when he got it. But God kept Caleb for the blessing, and he kept the blessing for Caleb, and he's going to do the same thing for you. Amen. So, waiting on the Lord, what does it mean? Praise him, worship him, wait patiently for him. Please remember this. Some of the greatest things in life come gradually. God works in the background slowly and methodically. And we think nothing's happening, and then there's a suddenly. A gradually becomes a suddenly. When nothing appears to be happening, he's working. It's working. It's sort of like, you know, you wake up one morning, you got one gray hair here. You got one gray hair there. One gray hair there. Next thing you look in the mirror, my God, my whole head's gray. I mean, it just happens. <laughs> if you know that God is for you, you could be absolutely assured Amen. something's happening. Amen. Whether you see it or not. Amen. God's working on your behalf. Amen. I mean, you know about the, you know, the Mexican pinata, you know, things. Large ball, animal thing, stuff full of goodies, candies. The whole points keep hitting the thing till you bust the thing open. Amen. While you're waiting for your breakthrough, keep speaking to it. Keep right. hitting it. Right. Keep the declarations of faith. Decree the word of the Lord right. over and over and over until one day it bursts open and blessings just go woohoo everywhere. <laughs> God's going to do it for you. Yeah. Don't stop. Okay, in closing, there are six ways to help you train yourself to be patient. Number one, slow down on purpose. Amen. Real difficult. Slow down on purpose. Practice being patient. In other words, put hurry out of your vocabulary. Amen. Deliberately let somebody check out in front of you if you're brave enough to go to the grocery store. Wrapped up in your space suit. <laughs> and you go. Not just people who have one or two things. No, they may have a basket full. You're asking me to let them get in front of me? Mm hmm. <laughs> or drive slower than normal. <laughs> Purposely. Or take a two minute break throughout the day. Just think about the goodness of God. Number two, understand that we are all different. There's only one of you. Let others be who they are without you trying to make them be like you. Amen. Number three, remember God's patient with you. While you were yet sinners, he died for you. Imitate his patience. Number four, learn to listen. Amen. Train yourself to be a good listener. Quite often, if you listen long enough, you won't get impatient because you have a better understanding of that person. Number five, give people a break. Train yourself to think good thoughts instead of bad thoughts. Make allowances for people. You don't know what they're going through. So be patient. Number six, follow the golden rule. 
treat others the way you want to be treated. I want people to be patient with me. How about you? Then sow in others, you know, what you want to reap and what you want to, to happen. Right. You know, be kind. Three scriptures in closing. Thessalonians, First Thessalonians. We urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Ephesians. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Colossians. So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, Amen. kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And remember, the judge is standing at the door. Jesus is coming. The only reason, if he does not come today, the only reason, because we're already in the third day. Amen. We're already in the third day. Maybe we can help with that at some point. But we're already in the third day. Third day is resurrection day. We're already in the third day. And because we're already there, my friend, only reason, I say that, which means he could come. The only reason, if he doesn't come today, is because he's just waiting for more to come in. More to come in. But there is a time frame. There is a cutoff day. Things, and it came to pass. There is a, it came to pass day. There is a set time, and we're right within the moment. We are in it. And if it's not today, it could be tomorrow. But any little less time right now is simply because somebody might come in. So you take time to tell them about him, will you? God bless. Amen. Did you learn anything? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming. If you're here today and you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, may you please just surrender to him. He's not going to beat you side of the head and come after you and drag you into heaven. He's made a way for you not to go to hell. He's made a way for you to come to go to heaven. He's made a way for you to experience heaven here on earth. He's made a way for us to live in victory. But it's by invitation. He's given the invitation, and he wants you to invite him into your life. I hope you will do that if you're watching out there. Listen, don't get caught up in the news. Oh, there's bad news. There's bad news everywhere. Uh, I, I'll just tell you that there is but there's good news the good news is that Jesus loves you he knows you by name he's not mad with you he cares about you he's waiting on you Jesus is waiting on you God the Father sent Jesus the Son to come after you because he loves you he has purpose for you so that you and I can live forever with him we can get out of the wickedness and, and come and be with him and even while we're here he gives us more than conquerors he makes us overcomers he wipes out yesterday so that when we go to heaven we don't have to go with all this garbage Amen. We, we can go clean and be refreshed and renewed and live with him forever and he gives purpose of why he even sent you here. If you're out there and you've never given your life to Jesus, there's a purpose in your life that's for the nation, that's for the world, that's for the city, that's for your family. And it won't be released until you invite Jesus in so that he can open your heart and show you why you came and why you're here. I hope you will. I hope you'll just invite him in. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, I, I need you. I need you. I need you. I ask you into my life, come into my heart. Come in, I want to give me to you. Come in, I don't understand, I don't understand so much. 
but I need you and I want you. He absolutely will invade your heart at the moment you open the door. I hope you'll do it. The same is true for anybody in this building today. I hope you will do it. I hope you will do it. Now before we go, I want to come over here and remind you of a miracle. Whatever anybody else might, might think, this ark that was built, forgotten how many years now, when did we say, 20 something years ago, 18 years ago, however many years ago. We put in this ark, this little Ten Commandments from the bookstore, didn't have quite as many cracks then. We put in a little plate like this, a little plate, plastic plate with little baby plastic loaves of bread. And we put in a stick about 18 inches long, just a stick about the size of my finger, stick. Put it in there. Been there all these years, all these years. And then, not too long ago, not too long ago, forgotten the exact date at the moment, July. Somebody remember the exact date? When was it? August the 4th, we come, and aroma's coming out, of baked bread, long story short, we opened it up, and there we find, we find the Ten Commandments with more cracks in it than it had before. We find a rod, don't know where the little teeny one was, don't know what happened to it, have no idea, but in, in, in the ark, it's this rod was written in ancient Hebrew, the name of Aaron on it. And you see it like it is. A miracle of God. All people have mocked it and made fun of it. Not me, it's a miracle of God. Nobody knows how it got there. We have cameras, look, search, everything. There. And then there was a basket. And in this basket, we didn't have a basket in there. They ended up being manor. It was about, a little about half full. We've served manor twice out of this to a congregation. There's probably been six to seven hundred people that have eaten the manor out of here. There wasn't enough manor in here for that many people. There's not much in here now at all. Not much. But if the Lord ever wants us to serve it again, I'm sure he'll fill it back up. And he told me I would see almonds. So I'm looking for almonds to show up inside of the ark. I'm looking. I'm looking. If you don't honor what God does, why would he give it? Just as easy as it was brought, it could be taken away. I honor it. And I'm going to wave it over the congregation today. Amen. Just wave it as, as Aaron would do his rod in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. May darkness be removed from your life. And blessings come from every direction. And sickness go out your door. And may patience, patience grow and develop in your home and in your life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Is there anyone here who has not seen uh, the ark or anything? If not, we will close it back up. Glory to God. And so I'm going to put this back in if the priest will come. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you. Bless it, Lord. Almonds, come forth. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Won't you stay in church? Patience. <laughs> Patience. Please don't forget the book that will be a great blessing to you at this time. Pardon? The resource center is open after service, so hallelujah. And the bookstore is open, not today, but it's open. So I hope you'll come back and... Mike, thank you. Hallelujah.